Hi, and welcome to our Facts 101 beginning of the year tips webinar. We're grateful that you're all able to join us. And if you're joining us on the recording, uh, thank you so much. And uh, if at any time anyone has any questions, there is a Q&A box and a chat box where you can put questions and we will answer those live. Or if you're watching this on a recording or think about things later, please feel free to contact the main office or email us at info at clhscadets.com. I want to introduce our panelists tonight. I am Mrs. Ashley Weehy. I'm the communications manager at Concordia. We have Mr. Jacob Pennycamp with us, our head of school, Mr. Patrick Frerking, our principal, and Mr. Phil Brockman, our dean of student success. I'm going to hand it over to Jake to get us started. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ashley. Good evening, and we're grateful that you're with us, and we're hopeful that the next uh, few minutes can be informative as we talk through some of the transitions and changes and things that might help you uh, launch your school year uh, for your child that's with us here at Concordia. I want to open us with a word of prayer. Would you bow your heads? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings of children, uh, the blessing uh, in a school like this to be able to um, proclaim and profess uh, the faith that we have in you. Lord, uh, as parents and as educators, we understand the great challenge it is uh, to nurture and to raise up a generation, and we pray that uh, in partnership together that we might um, provide the opportunities and experiences um, that will help our, our students to grow best into the leaders and into the path that uh, is laid out for them. And so I pray a blessing upon this year especially, and uh, and ask that your hand be upon our beginning and uh, as we continue. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, again, I'm Jacob Pennycamp. I have the great privilege of being the head of school here at Concordia, and you're going to hear from uh, our principal, uh, Pat Fairking, and our dean of students, Phil Brockman, on some of the updates to how we're going to run the procedures this year. Uh, but first, I want to make sure everybody understands um, we, have, we are excited about our theme for this year, which is Firm in the Faith with Christ at the center, and it really comes from uh, a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, beginning at verse 13, that reads this way, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love, and it is upon that firm foundation on which we hope uh, to establish not only this school year, but uh, the faith and the lives of the young people that we have the, the great blessing to be able to work with. Um, we're excited. Uh, probably many of you who will be most interested in this are among the 182 freshmen and 11 transfers who are totally new to our school. Uh, we had a great couple days last week getting started, and, and really at, here at the school, we go zero to 60 real fast. And so I'm actually going to uh, duck out of this webinar and head over to Zollner Stadium where we have some of our uh, first soccer games of the year and uh, and help be an administrator over there and supervise. Uh, but first, let me tell you a little bit about the meeting that we're going to have today and our agenda. Um, tonight, you are going to hear uh, first about our transition from on campus, which was our older school information system, to fax, uh, which is what we are going to be using going forward. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a second. You're also going to hear about some schedule updates as we really have the first uh, year of, of building out a schedule without so many of the restrictions that COVID had for us in contact tracing. That presents a new opportunity for us and how we run our schedule and do lunches. Um, you'll hear about some of the changes to our student handbook and some of the uh, dress code and otherwise things that are coming back into play and we will be uh, ensuring. And then you'll also hear uh, an extended presentation about uh, how we want to make sure it's something that's really top of mind for us. And I know for you as parents is that how can we ensure that Concordia is as safe and secure a school as we can possibly be um, given um, all the things that, that we want to be aware of and, and uh, accountable to in the world around us today. And then at the end, there will be an opportunity for you to ask some questions of our administrators as well. But let's go back to the transition in our school information system. So uh, schools are built around databases and we have a lot of information that we need to keep as records. Uh, so grades and attendance and uh, demographic information and all of that is really important. We had used a, a um, a national organization called uh, On Campus Prior. Uh, due to some of the changes specific to Indiana, 
on campus was not able or willing to become compliant with our state reporting. And so we really needed to find a new vendor. It was certainly not a choice we wanted to necessarily make. Uh, transitions are always hard. And so because of that transition from uh, on campus to the facts, we certainly take responsibility for the fact that some of those transitions might have been more difficult for you over the summer uh, than they otherwise would have been. And we expect that as uh, you become familiar with it, um, as we become more familiar with it, and as we have a chance to roll it out as part of the entire admissions and enrollment process, I fully expect that next spring and summer will be a lot smoother than anything uh, you may have experienced this summer. So thanks for bearing with us. Um, a couple of the things you're going to want to learn, though, um, you're going to hear about next from Ashley as she walks through a tutorial on how to access our parent portal um, from the family side. And so I'll throw it back to you, Ashley. Thank you. So what you're going to see here is a little walkthrough on FACTS and specifically the FACTS family portal. And what we're going to try and do is make this as easy to see on Zoom as possible. I know sometimes that's difficult when we have, well, when you're working with Zoom, but here's a short video that we'll also be posting on YouTube and uh, emailing out if you're under unable to see any part of it. Hello and welcome to our FACTS Family Portal training. Today I'll be able to walk you through how to access information as a parent or a student to be able to get to financial information, schedules, classes, homework, and grades for your student. So this is the first place that we're going to start. This is our uh, FACTS landing page, factsmgt.com. And we'll start here. We'll come over here to family login. You'll see two links here, one for the family portal login and one for payment plans. You're able to jump right into payment plans if you want to see that, or we'll, we're able to get to it through the family portal. So we're going to click into the family portal. This should look pretty familiar to you. If you haven't logged in yet, I'll give you those instructions here in a minute. But our district code is always going to be CON-IN. Please remember that. You'll need that every time that you log in. Your username will stay consistent and your password will be what you set up. If you ever get logged out, locked out of the system, it should only last 10 minutes. But if you ever have problems, you can contact us in the school office or email info at clhscadets.com. If this is your first time logging in as a parent, please click create new family portal account. Use this link to set up your account based on the email that we have on file for you. So this would be the email where you're getting all of the communications that we have been sending out this year. If you don't know that or don't have that yet, again, please contact us in the school office and we'll get that for you or email that same email address. If you are a student and haven't logged in yet, Please use the, use the forgot username and password. Your username is gonna be that first part of your email. So it's your graduation year, the first initial of your first name and your last name. So as an example, it could be 25 S Jones. That would be your username. And then you would set up your password. For students, make sure you click the student button. Parents, same thing. Make sure you're clicked on that parent button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into our family portal and show you this first page. This is the schedule. So you'll see um, there's a lot of different links. This is the landing page where you're gonna land. And there's different boxes. We have our announcement page. So this is just announcements that we'll put out throughout the year. And these will be posted here. You have just kind of a dashboard of different things coming up. You'll have your calendar. If you want to dig into the calendar a little bit more, click over here to the calendar. What this does is it shows you the breakdown of different days. You have you get to know what's an A day, a B day, C day, D day. When we have e-learning days coming up or events like our freshman or retreat, uh, you're able to see parents' nights or um when some uh, quarters begin and end. All that information is here on that calendar. Also, you're able to click in, see different resources that are in here as parents. 
like I said, when I was in here for the student, you have a lot of things that you can click into here. You'll be able to see schedules for your students, medical information, attendance. I want to show you this. This is homework. You'll be able to see a list of all of the homework coming up for your student. So these are the due dates for information that is coming up. And then you'll also be able to see grades. So these are not real grades for the student, just so you know, this is fake information that's set up. But just so you know how this will break down, you'll be able to see that there is the overall grade, how many points were gained, and then also for any kind of bonus or penalties. So in this case, we put in a fake grade here that it was late, so she got five points off, and a note here that's late, that it was late by one, one day. So you'll be able to see that breakdown. And then also in the parent view, you'll have a little button down here that says finances, and you'll be able to click into that to see what kind of payment plan you have set up, be able to make payments, or invoices on anything that's coming up, like graduation fees or other incidental bills as they come up. Please feel free to ask any questions as we go along, and we appreciate your participation. All right, so that is our facts demo. This is just a reminder, if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to throw those into the chat or the Q&A box. I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Freking as he gives some other important back to school information. Well, good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Uh, as Mr. Prentikamp said earlier, we're off to a really positive start of the school year. We're excited for that, and we look forward with a lot of joy and, and anticipation for this year ahead. Um, and as Ashley and Jacob have both referenced earlier, protocols as far as schools with COVID uh, continue to uh, release or, or become. Uh, not nearly as restrictive. So uh, we look forward to being able to do school as much as we possibly can, as normally as we possibly can. And so far, so good, um, including chapel with 100% student body in there. So it's been a few years since we've been able to start with that. Uh, we're going to use a, a couple of slides here, just kind of help our conversation as you go through that. And as Ashley said earlier, if you have any questions, by all means, put them in the chat box or um, give us a call here at school, see what we can do to help you out. All right, Ashley, you want to proceed? The first slides we're looking at our school calendar as far as the schedule and times are still the same. A and B days, classes start at 840. C, D, and E days, classes start at 8 o'clock, and we finish at 310. If you look at the middle of the uh, calendar or the middle of the schedule, you'll see threes and fours and fives, those little white boxes in there. Those are our lunch periods. So we've adjusted our lunches a little bit. All of the students are eating lunch up in the front of the building. Mr. Brockman's going to talk about that a little bit more here in some more detail. Uh, you can see on a C day, we meet for chapel, and then on D days, our koinonia groups met, meet mid morning with those. Next, we have um, just a reminder that with snow and ice and fog, when we call a two hour delay, that that is a 10 o'clock start, irregardless if it's an A day or a C day or a D day, whatever letter of the alphabet we have going on for the day. We'll uh, communicate that information uh, through the television uh, channels, ABC, CBS, and NBC, the scroll across the bottom. We'll text that information out as early as we possibly can. And then we'll follow up with an email to the students and teachers that have more details. That's really helpful for students that are involved with after school activities, teams, clubs, sports, et cetera, with those. Couple of calendar highlights for everybody. This Friday is an e-learning day. So on an e-learning day, students remain at home. Teachers will email homework. Now we have this one planned for a couple of reasons. One of which it's our freshman retreat. Another one, the peer ministers also have their retreat. If you're a parent of a freshman, we ask that you please have your freshman student here at 815. We'll finish the morning at 1130. There is no lunch involved with that. We'll also send out some more details on this event for the freshmen and their parents. Uh, Monday, September the 5th, Labor Day, no school. Tuesday, September 6th, this is a schedule change for us. Just uh, announced it a couple of days ago to our faculty. Tuesday, September 6th, we're going to have a two-hour delay. We'll start our academic classes at 10 o'clock. 
We're going to do some training with our faculty and staff that morning, starting at 7.30. So academic classes start at 10. You can see a really neat highlight for us is on Friday, September 30th, our Koinonia Service Day. And just so that everybody knows, October 7th, end of the first quarter, and it takes about five or six days for the report cards to be formally um, kind of processed and then distributed. And we distribute those through email. So a little bit more information as far as our report cards, <clears throat> excuse me, our report cards and our grades. If you go to our student parent handbook, which is on our Concordia website, you can click the link there on the bottom. That'll take you to where our grade scales are at. We have two different grade scales for our generals, uh, honors, and AP classes. Next, I'm going to let Phil jump in here and talk a little bit about lunch. Yeah, so this year we're uh, switching our lunch up a little bit where the last two years with COVID, we've been eating in the classroom. Um, and so this now um, allowed students to get out of the classroom, eat with some different friends and different people, um, as well as keeping food in one part of our building, uh, keeping that a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Um, but then kind of the big win was um, for our teaching staff. Uh, our teaching staff, uh, have they haven't been able to have a lunch um, kind of away from kids or a little break throughout the day um, away from students. And so um, this now has given them that 30 minute breather of, hey, just some staff time and um, some collaborating time as well. So, um, so far through three day, four days now that we've done lunch, it's been good. Um, we've gotten kids through lines a lot faster than what we've done in the past. Um, and again, the kids have done a great job in the cafeteria helping us uh, get that cleaned and picked up and ready to go for the next lunch group to come in. So, so far so good with um, with our little lunch change that we've been doing here with our A and our B lunch. Um, again, you can see some of the links there as far as if you need to add money to your uh, student's lunch account, um, if you got questions there, um, all those things can be accessed through the, um, the family portal. Next slide here, uh, we're talking uh, student parent handbook. Uh, and so again, some of the updates, again, you can access that through the website, um, but some of the changes or updates that we had, um, we've, we adjusted our random drug testing policy um, where we used to do that in-house. Uh, we're now using Parkview Health. Uh, to come in and do our random drug testing um, throughout the school year. So there's some updates with um, as far as that. Um, again, thank you to everyone that helped sign those waivers um, when you came through registration. Uh, Parkview kind of threw that in at us of they wanted a waiver um, to come through. So we again appreciate everybody that um, helped sign those and get those turned in. Uh, attendance stuff uh, with facts. Uh, you might be getting some more notifications as far as some attendance. Uh, they have a pretty uh, robust way of, you know, keeping parents up to date as far as attendance of their students. So you might see a few more notifications that way. The semester grade calculation. Um, again, when we switched over to facts, um, we had to kind of make this change of kind of a uniform uh, breakdown of our semester grade policy. And so you can see what we have set this for the whole school as a 42 and a half uh, first quarter, a 42 and a half second quarter, and a 15% uh, final, final grade. Uh, and you put all that together, that gives you your 100% semester grade. Um, so in the past, each uh, teacher in their section could decide what they wanted their breakdown to be. Um, with facts, we had to make that a uniform decision school-wide. And so you can see that's the breakdown that you'll see in each um, each of your students' classes in their, um, in their breakdown with their teachers. Um, and then a couple uniform adjustments that we had. We added gray uh, bottoms, uh, pants, and shorts allowed to be worn. Um, so before it was just khaki, navy, and black. And so we added gray to the mix there. Um, and then we uh, took away the hoodie option underneath their uniform shirt. So we were allowing students to wear hoodies the last few years and tried that out and just wasn't quite the look that we were hoping for um, as far as what um, some of our students were doing. So we're still allowing long sleeve shirts underneath that are gray, white, maroon, or black, um, but no hoods attached to those. Um, another big change, uh, or not change, but just kind of update that we're going through is our emergency policies. Um, and so um, we're, this is 
in conjunction with other Allen County schools, but we're trying to um, just have a more unified approach to emergencies uh, with, again, with other Allen County schools and with uh, first responders and police officers, um, just being able to be on the same page when there is an emergency, uh, that we're talking the same language. In the past, uh, la uh, we would only use kind of two uh, emergency calls. We would call, use something called a modified lockdown and then an actual lockdown. And just again, that was a little bit out of date. Again, using the word lockdown in both situations, um, not very effective and can be confusing. Um, and so we uh, just started partnering with some of what the other Allen County schools were doing um, and using some terminology here from the I Love You Guys organization. So we're starting to roll this out and um, we introduced this to all the students last week in our assembly, uh, watched a quick video on, um, on this and broke it down with the students as far as, okay, what, what you could hear from us over the PA. And so you can see the five, um, the five options hold, being there's something that we just need to keep everyone in the classroom, secure, meaning there's something um, outside of the building that we just need to get everybody inside uh, to make sure that everything is okay. Um, both of those classes and everything are going on as normal. Um, teachers are teaching and doing lessons and doing those kind of things. Uh, lockdown, again, is a situation where uh, we have a threat inside of the building. Um, and so again, this is your, your most serious um, and things that you know, you're reading in the news um, a little more frequently here. So if we go into a lockdown, it's locks, lights, and out of sight. Um, and we are um, trying to isolate that threat um, somewhere in the building that way. Uh, the last two then, evacuate. Um, so some type of um, evacuation, whether it's a gas leak, whether it's a bomb threat or something where we gotta get out of the building. Um, and so we would call an evacuation with that. And the last one then is shelter. And that is for some type of um, hazard or something going on for us, tornado, earthquake are the most um, commonly used shelter um, calls that we would have. So those are the five things that again, we'll be using um, throughout the semester and throughout the year and trying to help change what our verbiage is um, to again, keep um, our school and our, our kids and staff as safe as possible. Um, and you'll, again, get more information as things start rolling out. Um, again, we're trying to stay up to date in some of our uh, plans that way. And so uh, be on the lookout for some, some of those things throughout the year. I uh, touched on this a little bit before, but our drug testing policy, we brought in Parkview Health. Um, to help with our drug testing. And so some nice, th nice things with that is Parkview takes all of that um, and they kind of run it. Um, they will come to Concordia and they will do all the tests here at the high school. Uh, one nice change is that it'll be um, a saliva test is the first, um, first test. So it's the oral swab. So uh, your child will just have to put a swab in their mouth and um, lubricate that and then that gets tested. And um, so no more uh, urine tests is what we all had done in the past. Um, the only way you'll have to do, your child will do a urine test if their saliva test is inconclusive. And so they need to do something that's um, just a little bit more accurate or um, there's an issue with that. Parkview then takes all that and then they'll bring it back to us and let us know or contact you as far as what's going on that way. Our counselors, um, you can see listed, Mrs. Bollinger. Uh, she has the beginning part of our alphabet. So if your family name is A through F, uh, I believe you have Mrs. Bollinger. Uh, Ms. Nash has the middle part of our alphabet. And then Mr. Campbell uh, ends our alphabet N through Z. So those are your students' guidance counselors. Uh, we have Ms. Mary Keller that comes in from Cross Connections Monday through Thursday. Uh, so if your child, uh, just needs somebody else to talk to, or is just uncomfortable talking to somebody here that they might know, um, or just feel like, okay, I need a, to talk to somebody outside of the Concordia circle here. Uh, Mrs. Keller comes in twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, 11 to two. Um, wonderful lady there for your son or daughter to talk to. And then we have two campus pastors, uh, Pastor Hoover, and this year, Vicar McGladdery will be here with us this year as Pastor Hoham is away. 
And so those two are our campus pastors for this year. We have a um, area of concern and anonymous reporting tool that uh, students have access to. Uh, this is a link in the daily bulletin. Um, and so if there is something that is going on, that's a concern. Um, again, we stress to our kids to, you know, tell, you know, say something, you see something, say something, um, something's not right. Um, please let us know uh, what's going on. Um, again, we encourage them to talk to an adult, find an adult, um, a trusted person there that um, if there's something that's going on to um, let them know. But if it's something that they just don't want their name attached to, again, the more details they put in this notice, um, the better chance that we have of really getting to the bottom of it and getting to the source of some things. So that again is available to your students uh, in the daily bulletin through a link. All right, that's all for me. Uh, Ashley, going back to you. Okay, we did have one question related to your area and then a fax question. Um, there was a question of what happens to those students that take orchestra that happens before school on say a delay or a day when we're changing the schedule. Um, what do those kids do? Yeah, so that's a great example. Orchestra, um, another event that we have a lot of before school activity is the JROTC drill program clubs and activities. So when we make those announcements very quickly thereafter, the orchestra director, the JROTC commanders, they'll send out information just to the students of that group, that class, that activity, as far as what the plan for the day is going to be. Great. And then we had a question about facts. So the question was whether each parent needs to have their in own individual login. Yes, it's ideal for you to have your own login because what that does is say that you forget your username or password that's connected to your personal email. So uh, one person can log in with their credentials. The other person can log in with their credentials. There's no reason that you can't share them if you want to do that, but the system is built for you to have each individual login. Your students also have their own login and they have to have that login in order to see their homework, to see their grades. So every student is required to have a login and to um, go ahead and log in the system. So if you haven't already, please check with your child, check with your student and make sure that they have done that. All right, please keep the questions going. We have a few more things to go over. Uh, a couple things I want to show to you is we've had some questions about picture retake day. So that is going to be on September 27th. And this is the information we're using a new uh, company this year for our for our pictures. So you'll see if your student got a picture taken already that is already available on the website. You can go and you can order. It's uh, justinspics.com. And you can, uh, from what people have been telling me, choose from three different photos. You can choose from backgrounds. It's a great system and we're really excited about it. All right. Then I just want to walk you through a few things on our website. And let me get that connected. So our website, if you haven't been on here, is a great resource for you as a parent. Uh, and just a member of the Concordia community. So you'll see a login here for the FACTS Family Portal. If you ever forget it, that's available to you. And also we have some fun quick links up here. So this is the calendar. So you're going to see that there's all the events that we have as a school. You'll see sporting events, you'll see meetings, you'll see any big things that are happening in the school. This is the calendar to go to. You'll also see the student schedule. So you'll see that PDF that Mr. Ferking referenced earlier. So you'll be able to see when those lunches are, when different class periods are. So say that uh, your student needs to miss for an appointment, you'll know exactly what class period they're missing. This also has the breakdown of which day is which. So you can get this in the family portal, but you can also see a breakdown here all at once. And another big one that we get asked about is that academic calendar. So the academic calendar is going to show you all the breaks that we have throughout the year. It's going to show you spring break, Christmas, big days that we have. So this is another great resource for you to have. And just again, 
There's a lot of good information in here. We have um, links to our Facebook page, news items, blog posts, a lot of get great information about each individual department. So great resource to check it out. And then we have a Concordia Parents Facebook page. I encourage everyone to be a part of this. This is a great resource that we have and it's uh, parents for parents. Um, They'll post on here, you'll see things about needing uniform shirts, and you'll see information about uh, carpooling or the mom squad, which is a great group that we have that supports our faculty here at the high school. So just a lot of great information. It's just um, go on Facebook, search for the Concordia Parents, you'll see uh, the chapel, the worship conference center on here, and then you'll be able to just answer a couple questions about your student um, to be accepted into the group. Also, we have a new system this year. It's called Merit. We had it at the end of last year, and we're really excited to continue using it. What this does is it allows us to put out achievements about your student, and then you as a parent are able to then share that out through your own social media, through email, and then it keeps a growing resume of your students. So we try to put everything in here. So from awards to just great announcements about your students. So see, uh, watch your email soon because we'll be sending out something just for the start of the school year. And uh, again, just a great resource to you as a parent. Also, one other thing that we have is a uh, our email communication. So we send out two um, two main emails, two newsletters. One is our daily bulletin, and then one is our Concordia in Contact newsletter. The daily bulletin is sent out every day, every school day that we have to all students and to parents. So if you're not receiving that, please let us know. Please contact us so that we can get that fixed for you. And then we have the Concordia and Contact newsletter. That is a school-wide newsletter that we send to everyone. We send it to our parents, to our alumni, to all of our friends. And it just is neat announcements about things going on in the school. So I'm going to stop sharing. And then we had another question out there, I believe. Pat was there or Phil, there was a question out there. You're still muted, Phil. Yeah, it was a question about, uh, do we have an officer on campus um, for our security? And we do not have an SRO, our SRO officer on campus. Um, we continue to have a positive relationship with our FWPD. Um, so again, you might see a squad car that's parked over in our stadium area. Um, again, that's part of just having some of that outside presence um, for us, but also to um, allow them to have a central location where they can respond um, with our easy access there to the Coliseum and Crescent and Anthony, so. That's great. All right, well, we will stay on here for another couple minutes if you have any other questions. Um, but again, if you think of anything uh, outside of today or uh, when you're seeing this recording, please don't hesitate to contact any of us or contact the school office and we'll be able to answer any of those questions that you have. Hey, Ashley, could I just, um, just a request for families when you are logging into your family portal, is the information, the demographic correct? Do we have correct mailing address? Do we have a correct phone number? Do we have a correct email address? Just those little things can really be helpful for us. So please double check. Yes, definitely. Especially those cell phone numbers and email addresses. That's how we're going to be communicating with you. Uh, we had a question about the daily bulletin. So we will let you know that we had to redesign the daily bulletin from last year. We do apologize. It's probably not as clean as it was last year. And we're kind of figuring out a new system with that. So with the start of the school year, I know it's kind of long. Um, that'll get pared down as we go. Um, but we're keep we're finding that, and uh, this year it's going to be coming from Jeff Frazier, who is our new receptionist. So watch for that again. Um, we we're still working on it, still working on the design, and so uh, just hang in there with us while we keep improving that.
All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. We appreciate your time and we hope that this information has been helpful as we uh, start another great year at Concordia. Thanks everyone. Have a good night.